Welcome to Wacky Wednesdays, where everyone has a chance to show off their car mods. And here's this week's winner. I want to give a thanks to Scotty Kilmer for allowing me to show off one of my six Saabs. The one I'm going to show you is a 1986 Saab 900. It's the SPG model. So let's uncover it, go for a little ride, and then I'll give you a tour. Has an interesting history. I live in Birmingham, Alabama. This car started out its life in Birmingham, Alabama, 1986. It was purchased at Bart Star Motors. Yes, that Bart Star. In 1962, Ford Thunderbird was traded in for this thing. The cost was $22,000. That's in 1986. $22,986 is like $50,000 today. It's a lot of money. Sobs weren't cheap. Now it's a dead car brand and you can buy them for peanuts. But then you had to be a dentist or a lawyer or a doctor or an architect or an engineer or somebody pretty well off to buy one of these things. Here in the South, there weren't that many Sobs. So somebody buying one in Birmingham, Alabama was kind of an unusual event. Well, the car spent most of its life in Birmingham. Got regular service, oil changes, it's all documented. I have the paperwork for that. But after a while, I guess the guy got a hankering to move on and traded it in. The car went to Mississippi for a little while and then to Missouri. Something came up with a job change and he sold it to me. I brought it back to Birmingham. I've had it for, oh, probably about nine months now. I completely renovated the interior. I, re I reworked one of the seats. The rest of the interior was pretty good, but I ripped it all out, pressure washed the carpets, and uh, really spiffed it up. This really is a rolling restoration. When I got it, it had some rust holes in the passenger floor pan from a, a drain pan leak. Um, had that all welded up and uh, reinstalled the interior after that. Also uh, installed some sport springs and Coney adjustable shocks. It made a world of difference. After all, the old stuff was 33 years old. This thing drives like it's on rails now. And the engine, even though it's got over 270,000 miles, runs great. These things are subject to cracked dashboards and uh, the previous owner shelled out over 2,000 bucks to get a crack free dash and I'm enjoying that right now. Thank you previous owner. Alright, some of the quirky things about this car which makes it unique and why I like it. The ignition is in between the seats. The vents right here don't put heat out. They're fresh air vents. I guess the engineers at Saab thought that if you were driving and the car got too warm, you'd want some fresh air in your face. A lot of people don't know that about these cars. So it doesn't matter what you have the fan at, you put it here, it's gonna blast away. Another thing is this grab bar. These are manually adjustable seats. And so the front passenger has a bar to grab onto to pull the seat forward if need be. So that's pretty neat. Simple, no bells and whistles. Simple elegance, I call it. The Saab engineers did things for a reason. Buttons and controls were put within easy reach so you wouldn't have to take your eye off the road. And they prioritized where they placed things. For instance, the radio, most often adjusting the radio, is up high so you don't really have to deviate from the road while you're adjusting it. Saab was actually and still is an aircraft company. Automobiles they got into late in the game but this is kind of reminiscent of a cockpit. Saab engineers were really tricky too. They made it such that you couldn't take the key out unless the car was in reverse. 
I speculate that the reason they did that primarily was that they liked to be unique. They didn't want to be like any other car manufacturer. They claim, though, that it's a security feature, and also they got the key away from your knee in case of a crash. I think it's kind of neat having the key down there. It is kind of susceptible to spills, etc., but no biggie because Saab didn't put cup holders in these things. Well, unless you consider this cup holder. I've done my own little modification for a cup holder. And armrest. This came out of a Volvo 850. I modified it, matched the leather, and it looks great. Now look at that windshield. It's a wrap around windshield. The visibility in this thing is awesome. And then the headroom. You feel like you're driving in a dirigible hanger. I'm not big, but there's at least seven or eight inches between the top of my head and the top of the, the roof. A well-designed car. The Saab 900 is a car that was made by Saab Automobile from 78 until 98 in two generations. The first generation was from 78 to 93 and is known as the classic, such as this one here. The classic 900 is based on the Saab 99 chassis, though with a longer front end to meet U.S. frontal crash regulations. The 900 was produced in a two and four door sedan, and like this one, three door hatchback and also a five door hatchback. Additionally, from 86, a convertible was introduced. All in all, 908,817 Saab 900s were built, including 48,888 convertibles. In total, there were 7,621 SPGs imported into this country during their run. In 86, there were 1,498 of them, and you could get any color as long as you chose Edwardian gray, which is what this one is. Being such a low volume manufacturer, any Saab limited edition model is considered a rarity. The same car in Europe was marketed as the Aero, but since GM owned the rights to the name Aero, it went by SPG, Special Performance Group, in this country. These things had no distinctive badging to identify it as an SPG. You just kind of had to know what you were getting. And maybe Saab wanted to have a sleeper in their fleet. Who knows? SPGs had some performance and appearance upgrades. In the later years of the SPGs uh, got boost in horsepower. Um, and also the later years had some upgraded suspension components. But in general, these are the most collectible of the 900 series. The body side panels and also the three-spoke wheels were designed to reduce drag coefficient. And the top speed on these things was somewhere around 130 miles an hour. This particular car here has a horsepower of only 165 horses, but it's no slouch. One of the neatest and most interesting features of this car is the way this hood opens, clamshell hood. Just love it. The Saab 900 is a front engine, front wheel drive car with a longitudinally mounted 45 degrees slanted inline four cylinder engine. Like its predecessor, the 99, the 900 contained a number of unusual design features that distinguish it from most other cars. Firstly, the engine is installed backwards, with the power delivered from the crank at the front of the car. Secondly, the transmission, technically a transaxle, bolted directly to the bottom of the engine to form the oil pan. The car is not large, but it has an immense interior. There's 51 cubic feet of storage back here. I've got mine set up with the toolbox hanging off of the parcel shelf. The usual uh, place for this is underneath the floor. I did that because I also mounted my battery under the floor in the void uh, where the spare tire well is. Look, you could sleep back here if you had to. People have been known to transport a couch or a refrigerator in the back here. 
all in all, the hatchback design is a very functional interior design. These cars are appreciating in value. As a matter of fact, just today on Bringer Trailer, a 1990 SPG fetched $10,500, and mine is in much better shape. In 1987, the 900 underwent a facelift with a different front end treatment, different grill, a sloping grill and headlight arrangement. I have to mention that it's not just the cars that make this worthwhile, it's the people involved. The groups, the forums, the other people who keep these cars going, sharing information makes it all worthwhile. So that's it. Thank you, Scotty, for letting me show off my car. I know how you feel about sobs, but this one I hope will change your mind. Sob on. Oh, a sobbing we will go, a sobbing we will go. Hi ho the Dario, a sobbing we will go. Well, that was this week's video, and to have your car mod shown on my channel here, check this out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.